Okay, I'm back in the field and today I'm diving into a topic that might shock you, literally. We're talking about the potential hazards of living near or purchasing real estate near high voltage power lines and how these seem to be getting closer and closer as time goes on. Now this subject comes up all the time when I'm dealing in real estate. Anytime there's a power line near a house, like the ones behind me or even smaller, people ask and there's no real concrete answer. So I'm gonna dive into this today and uh, get some answers and some info on this, hopefully. The primary concern revolves around the electromagnetic fields or EMFs. Now, while the scientific community has mixed views on the health effects of EMFs, some studies suggest a potential link to issues like cancer, especially childhood leukemia. And just like most things these days, there's differing opinions on this subject. So I'm going to read a few quotes from two different pieces of Canadian literature, and then I'm gonna do some EMF measurements from my reader just to see how good or bad things are. Okay, the first piece of literature here, these are both from BC, uh, oddly enough. This is BC Hydro, the utility company. So of course, I don't think they're gonna say anything too bad, but let's just paraphrase a couple of things here or quote a couple of things. Uh, power lines in your neighborhood. The majority of the concerns we hear about the electric and magnetic fields given off by power lines, electric and magnetic fields, commonly referred to as EMF, are invisible energy fields that are very prevalent in our daily lives. And here they have some key points. EMF levels decrease rapidly the further you are from the source. This means that by the time EMF power lines reach your home, they are often at lower levels than those already present in your home. At the street level, magnetic field levels from power lines are very low, often lower than those given off by the appliances in your home. Extensive international research over the past 40 years has found no negative health effects associated to low level electric and magnetic fields like those from power lines. Magnetic fields aren't shielded or blocked by putting power lines underground. And lastly, they say, we rely on the latest research and findings from national and international health authorities, including Health Canada and the World Health Organization, WHO, for those of you who are not familiar, when it comes to addressing concerns about safety and EMF. These organizations have concluded that low level electric and magnetic fields like those from power lines are not a cause for concern and aren't linked to adverse health effects. And of course they give the links. Now I did follow the Health Canada link and that was talking about RF uh, fields, which is radio frequencies, 5G and, and all the rest of that, where this is different. These are low frequency magnetic fields and they're not the RF ones that they're talking about in the link they gave, but anyway. And now to keep things fair from the BC Medical Journal, also from BC obviously here, and is living near power lines bad for our health? The debate of whether there are adverse effects associated with electromagnetic fields from living close to high voltage power lines has raged for years. While research indicates that large risks are not present, the possibility of a relatively small risk cannot be conclusively excluded. Okay, so we went from no risks to it can't be conclusively excluded here. So this is changing the story here, depending on what you read. Although earlier studies did suggest associations between exposure and a variety of health effects, including brain cancer, breast cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and reproductive and development disorders, most of these associations have not been substantiated by more recent research. One notable exception to this is the association with childhood leukemia, which the International Agency for Research on Cancer regards as sufficiently well established to rate extremely low frequency magnetic fields as a possible human carcinogen. The first study to link childhood leukemia with residential EMF exposure was published in 1979, and since then, a number of studies had found weak associations to support this original finding. Studies using magnetic field strength as an exposure measure have found that exposures greater than the range of 0.3 to 0.4 microteslas. Now remember that number because that's the units we're going to be using. So 0.3 to 0.4 microteslas lead to a doubling risk of leukemia with very little risk below this level. This exposure is approximately equal to a distance of 60 meters within a high voltage power line of 500 kilovolts. Now the ones behind me are 110 kilovolts, I'm pretty sure, and there's six of them on each tower. However, a more recent study showed an elevated risk of leukemia among children living in homes with distances much greater than 60 meters from high voltage power lines. This study involved close to 30,000 match case control pairs of children living in the United Kingdom. It was found that children living 
in homes as far as 600 meters from power lines had an elevated risk of leukemia. An increased risk of 69% for leukemia was found for children living within 200 meters of power lines, while an increased risk of 23% was found for children living within 200 to 600 meters of the lines. This study was notable in that it found some elevation of risk at much greater distances than previous studies. So pretty interesting stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my EMF reader out and I'm gonna compare the distances from the houses built in the 1970s and early 80s to the newer houses built 20, 30, and even five years ago to see how things have changed and they've got closer. And I'll show this on the overhead here to show how close they are. They range from 132 feet to 60 feet or so. Anyway, I'll put the distances on here and I'll talk about them when I'm walking with the meter. Okay, here we are about 40 meters from the power lines. These are the homes built in the late 70s and 80s. And we're getting a reading here. Hopefully you can see it on this of 0.6 micro Teslas. Now it does drop down lower. I had it lower just a second ago. I am beside a cable box. I don't know if that matters. But yeah, as you can see, we're getting closer to the hydro lines and it's down to uh, 0.3. So that's at the higher range of what that study just suggested. We're just gonna keep walking here. And uh, of course we're walking closer to the power lines. So I'll just give it a second. Maybe when I get over to my truck here, I'll do another reading. It's pretty sunny, so I have to Make sure I have good focus on this here. I don't think the neighbors are too happy. They don't know, what is this guy doing? The one neighbor over there is always looking around. I know this hydro field well. I used to ride my dirt bike here. All right, let's see where we're at here so far. So we walked about half the distance. It's 0 0.4 micro Teslas right now. Let's see, we'll keep an eye on it here. Yeah, it's so bright out right now. We're at 0 0.86 right now. We're not even under them. You can see we're not, we're not even at them yet. And there we are, 1.25. And again, I don't know if you can see it on there yet. You can, I can see it on the screen actually. One point, or sorry, 2.4. So of course it's spiking right up here. Three micro Teslas. Okay, we're right under the lines right now. We're at 3.33, and if I actually put it up higher, it actually climbs the higher I go, 3.5. So now let's go to these houses over here. I hate uh, letting these people know that I'm doing this, but let me see here. They're probably gonna get pissed, start yelling at me. So we're almost right in line with those. So there we are, right in line with those other houses. I don't want to get them on camera because there's people on the thing and there's people outside. So 1.3 micro Teslas right at the lot lines or at the back of the homes. So that's way above what that study recommends. And uh, they, they were saying 0 0.3 or less. Of course, it climbs back up now. Okay, so I had to get back in my truck out of the neighbors. They're like retirees. They get really, you know, irritable when you start walking around there and they're like what is this guy doing i can see it right i know the neighborhood like i said before but uh what did we learn today so what i learned was that uh, both of those studies or both of those uh, reports or literature they have true statements in them the one was that uh, yeah, the further you get away, the less it gets, obviously, exponentially less. So at 40 meters at the older homes from the 70s and 80s, it was like regular levels, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, depending on where you are. It's, it's within those levels of, they say, more than 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 micro Teslas, and you're at risk, and your, your risk increases for childhood leukemia and all the rest of that. Now, as I got to the newer homes, which were 20 meters, they were half the distance away. So half the distance, but their levels were three to five times higher than the recommended uh, allowable limits from these studies. So they're at like 1.2 to 1.5 micro Teslas and maybe even higher once you get up higher in the house because as you get higher, you get closer to the lines. So after seeing this or after seeing these numbers, would you buy a house that close to a power line, 20 meters or so, especially if you knew what kind of readings were coming uh, off of an EMF reader like this? I definitely wouldn't. Um, I guess if you don't have kids, that might change things. 
but it is a stigma on the house and it is a conversation I regularly have with home buyers. They're always concerned and a lot of people won't even look. They see there's power lines near it, I don't wanna look at it. So it definitely does affect the value and the saleability of the house. But let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.